everybody, and welcome to the Hapori Podcast. I'm Craig Prime. I'm Patrick. And I'm Toa So, how's everybody doing today? I'm doing well. Pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, another day, another dollar. Um, no dollars for me. Yeah, we're already, what, six episodes in? That went by really, really, really fast. A what? Six episodes I pretty much have not talked in. Woohoo! It's all right. You got you, you got you got this episode to talk to. Okoto. This is your this is your time. My time's. Yep. I gotta get a flashlight then. <laughs> yep. Joko to the twelve. Okay. Um. What I do? Yeah. So uh, you guys wanna talk about the game? The game? Yeah. Uh. Crux, I mean. You have the game, so I mean, yeah, he's the man. He knows all. Correct, so you know all about it. You want to introduce it to the viewers at home. Bionicle: The Masks of Power is a fan-created open-world adventure game currently in development. One of the creators of this game is Joe Cool One Two Three One on YouTube. Him, his brother, and a group of fans are busy figuring out the game mechanics, composing an original soundtrack, and other things. The game's story is based on events from the first year of Bionicle, like when the Tomato arrive, meet the Tohunga and Jiraga, and fight the Rahi threatening the island. This project also takes a lot of cues from the cancelled game Bionicle The Legend of Mata Nui, such as being able to travel through and explore the various Wahi and Koros on the island of Mata Nui, as well as the Kini Nui Temple and other various locations. You are able to play as each of the six Tomata and can switch between 12 different types of masks for each character. Run, jump, swim, and fight your way through the island of Mata Nui as you go on side quests for villagers, fight dangerous Rahi, and explore. The game runs on the Unreal Engine, so be prepared for some gorgeous graphics. The game is also capable of running at a 60 FPS frame rate. Right now, the game only works on Windows computers. Yeah, I, yeah, I've seen gameplay for it before. It looks really cool. I mean, I you correct so you played it on uh, calls before. I've seen it. It's really cool. Yeah, it looks re- really in depth. Yeah, I watched LJ's video about it. It was really impressive how well mapped out the whole island was and everything. Like they've got all the They've got all, they've pretty much got any landmark that you've seen like Minog and everything, which is really cool attention to detail, and I'm sure it was really hard to do. Yeah, the 3D animation in that game looks incredible. It's like you know, yeah, you know, doing it in 3D with yeah, big update from Minog from back way back when. So it's really cool. I was like, I was like, oh my gosh, HD. Yeah, yeah, the basic thing. It's cool. They're sorry, Toko. What were you gonna say? No, I was just saying like yeah, I had the original soundtrack. that gets the whole. That's I, for me. That from my experience of playing, you know, Minog last year, that was like I played the first time last year and I beat it. It's like even the whole experience was the music, and I think that's you know they gotta have that in there, obviously. And they'll yeah. probably do some remixes or something. Yeah, that'd be cool. Just to spice things up a little bit, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, it's really impressive. It's cool because, like you said, like it's inspired by that canceled game, which looked really fun, um, and it's like. Like just the attention to detail and like the locations and I'm I it, like they're making a full fledged game which is really cool and then oh man if somebody made a game based off the canceled Metro Nui game that would be really cool oh dude <gasps> have you guys seen any footage from the canceled Metro Nui game I have not oh it 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 looks it's really cool like they like they were gonna have a, a free roam city from what I remember what? um. Yeah, and they were gonna, and they had, they had like the movement and everything all planned out. Like it was like the movement, like it was very parkoury and very like based on movement and exploration. It looked really good. Oh, I didn't cancel it. I think it was because it, I don't remember something like the companies, or it was like just too hard to make or something like that. They didn't have a big enough budget, but it looked like a really good idea. I would love to see somebody make a game based off it. That's yeah, very cool. And then our actual like a game based on 2006 that makes sense would be cool too. <gasps> Dude, 2007, please. Oh, that'd be a weird game. The entire be- Ignition trilogy, please. The entire Ignition, geez. I would. I think a Barra Magna game would be pretty fun too, just because I feel like the location. Yeah. Would be- Freaking Mara Nui would be amazing. I think just swimming underwater. Oh my god. But I'm thinking like of a bear magnet game, be like a Mad Max game, like it's a big open desert and get like vehicles. Mad Max, oh my god, I will let uh, you know race other people in and freaking rob them or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, Bar Mountain would be perfect for an, a massive open world game with like on with like that's online, like a m- massive multiplayer multiplayer online game. 
really cool because you could have a massive like like open world with different cities, which you could be like hubs. You could have vehicles that everybody gets and like everybody has their custom, and then you could go to each city and like fight other other people, like other uh, other Glatorian, and have like battles online. That'd be really cool. Hmm. Yeah, I would definitely like that. And yeah, and then a G two game we got a few, but they're yeah. I, I didn't have I, I for the G two. Got- I wish we got like some kind of console game for G two or something like that, but you know, of course, they wouldn't do that. Yeah, it's too hard. Like even like a like like what they do with Ninjago, if they even made like a three DS game, that'd be fun. Yeah, I I think the engine and stuff for the two thousand fifteen game, I forgot that was called. I think it was called like Mask of Power or something. Um, I feel like the engine for that, like they could have done so much more with that game than what they did. Like they really could have made a whole like Okoto and everything, and I, in that engine, I think it would have worked just fine. Um, yeah, but instead they just made it like a beat 'em up thing. Yeah, I would have seen. I would have loved to see an entire Kodo Island where you can just go to the Temple of Time or see the Mask Makers, go to yeah. the Tomb. Like it would be so awesome if you like. I wish they made some sort of game where you just like free room, uh, free roam of all the Kodo. You go to different villages and such. You know, yeah. Like, skull, like it had like the summer update where you go to the see the Mask Makers with the Toa to fight the Skull Villains and such. That would have been so freaking cool. That would have been I, that would have been really cool. Yeah, freaking! You have like a boss battle in the arena with Skull Slicer. Oh my god! Yeah, man, come on, guys, make a Bionicle game. Somebody yeah. make a Bionicle game. Yeah, I, I would do it if I had the equipment, but I'm stupid. <laughs> so I wouldn't. I wouldn't do it if I had the equipment. It's freaking hard. It's making a game is one of the hardest things ever. It's it's not easy. Well, it turns out fun in the end, I guess. Yeah, well, I mean, if you pull it off and it's a good game, then you can be really proud of it. Shall no. we transition into the mock segment and talk about your mock Toa Okoto? No, I think we should, That's your Mac. You want to post photos to Okoto? Uh, I have to take photos first. I mean, <laughs> All right, I guess we'll let Krexa go first. He's way more prepared. Yeah, yeah. All right, Krexa, what do you got here for your mocks? This is an original character from one of my series, which is in development. Her name is Nika which is a name for her that was suggested by one of my friends. She is a Gamatoran student or teacher, I haven't really decided which, in uh, Metro Nui, and she loves learning new things about the city. She is pretty uptight and may seem like kind of strict at times, but she has a strong moral compass and really just wants to help others out. Yeah, the mock looks, the mock looks really cool. Like, I really love, I love the color scheme, that's great. Do the teal... Bones are they the are they the same color teal as the mask or is it a different color? It's a slightly different color. All right, looks really good though. I, I like the feet design. The torso looks really awesome too. It looks like a better version of the torsos that the Matoran had in the movies. Yeah, you fit like a heart light in there and everything. So it's a really nice combination of um, technique and CCBS, I think. Thanks. Whoa. Okay. Now that I'm looking at the build, that's really interesting. So you use an upside down Hordika waist. Right? Do the Hordika have those waists, or am, am I dumb? Uh, I know that the Vaki had them. The Vaki. Okay, we'll say Vaki, so we're not wrong, so we don't get yelled in the comments. But use, you, so you flip the Vaki leg up, or not leg, uh, hip piece upside down, and then you have, are those Glatorian necks coming down to attach to the legs? Yes. Those are actually really clever. Nice job, dude. Thanks. All right, you want to talk about the other one? Yeah, so uh, this is a mock of Krek Prime in his Matoran form. His design is based on the designs of the Matoran scene in Mask of Light. And the reason he has a white and trans neon green mask instead of a white and silver one is because my extra Kopaki Uniter set is on display at my library right now. A lot of, it's very, it's, it's, it's a lot, it takes a lot of inspiration from the Protector stuff. Um, but it looks really good, it turned out really well. Um, it is funny seeing with that, like, that mask, that mask is the mask is pretty ugly looking with the green on it. Like the white and the green do not work well. But that's alright. Maybe that's him when he's sick and he's got like the, a cold or something. And the back's nice too. He did a good job covering that. But yeah, do you have photos now, Toakoto? I do have photos now. And I will send them to the chat. And Krexa, I do like your mock. I, I think it's a very interesting uh, Matoran build. Uh, and the mini Krexa too. I like how the, you use the Kapaka and infected mask. I like how you switch up the colors a little bit with the purple and such with having on the eyepiece. It's cool. So this is Anaku, the Grave Guardian. He's a character in my series, Bionicle House Legacy. He had a big role in Episode 7, which was called Nightmare. Um, 
I don't want to get too much into his backstory, but he is, I would just say this, it wasn't said in the episode, but he is the brother of the main villain of my series. And uh, he's an anti-villain. Anti uh, he's His job is basically he's from the pit. He's good friends with the Wanderer, you know, uh, Renzo the Mox's character from Bayorama, and he's been, he was also in episode 7 too. Um, and Anaku has a pretty interesting backstory with, uh, which we'll find out, like, I'm halfway through my first season of my series, so you'll find out more about him later on. Um, but without, if you watch the series or not, you don't have to. But, uh, so yeah, uh, I think he's a very interesting character. I, after I built him, like, I built him back in December last year, I believe, and I've had him built ever since. And I realized that he looks like he has a Vizon look to him. And that was not my intention with him. I wanted to make him look as undead or like ugly as possible, and just. And I think I kind of captioned that. And he has like you know he has a, for a weapon he has like this scythe, and he has like a kind of claw hand with his uh, his right his left hand, excuse me. And um, yeah, I mean he has some G1 pieces, he has some CCBS pieces on him. Uh, he has some antlers. It's not supposed to be messing neck people. Renzo made fun of me for that. No, it's not. Uh, no, stop. Yeah, it's not Messinek, uh self talk. It's not based off of that at all. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Also, he uses he has a cape. I was gonna have uh, put holes in it before, but I was like, I don't want to ruin it. So I think it's having giving him a black generic black cape fit it well with him, and it kind of goes weirdly on him, but I think it suits him well. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for Aniku. I mean, unless you guys have something to say about him. Well, for this mock, I really like the uh, mixing of G1 Bionicle pieces, Technic, and CCBS pieces. I think that they all just come together really nicely in this mock, which is always a good thing to see. And I also like the design of the scythe. It looks very regal and uh, fitting for this character. Uh, I also like how he has, for his left hand, just this huge claw gauntlet thing. That's pretty cool. If you were wondering why he has one gray horn, like on the body, and one black, because the gray one is actually uh, not this, yeah, the, the yeah the gray one. Uh, he got he got his that one was cut off and it grew back, so the black one was original antler for him. I was, yeah, I was gonna have it all weird looking at first, but I decided to have like oh it's, it's grew back and it's just yeah it, there's a reason why he got it cut off and such. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna get too much into it, but all right, that's Anaku. Well, yeah, so I think it looks great. I really like his look. Very Grim Reaper-esque, and I think that was kind of yes. an intention. Exactly. Uh, I think he even says, hey, you know, the Grim Reaper, that's kind of me. Um, in the episode, right? Doesn't he say something like that? Yeah, he's like thinking of me like the Grim Reaper and such, which that was like, like for the, I, I didn't go too much back into what his role in the pit was, but he he got, go some of his backstory, he kind of got banished there, and he was able to take the job for, Overlooking for the dead people and such, and make sure they don't goof around, and, like trying to escape and such, as people, you know, do anything to get out of it. So his job is kind of just like the wander. He's pretty much the wander's right hand man, but he takes um, care of other areas, of places. Yeah, because it's a big place. It's the entire universe. So yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Looks yeah. I really like the way you added those G one pieces to his shoulders. That looks really nice. Um, I just wish there was a shorter Star Wars lightsaber piece that it would be sticking out, but I like, I love the look of it on the CCBS shell. Um, and I like, uh, the claw with it goes really well with that. I think if this dude had two claws too, that'd be a cool thing to see. Um, I, I yeah, it just looks really, I wish I could see the feet a little bit more because it looks like they've got a custom design and I can't really see them. Yeah, uh, he kind of has like, I'll take a picture of it. Actually, I'll do it right now, but he has a, like a lower custom leg built, which... It was um, it was kind of it's really random. I just like, oh, okay, I'll just do something like this. But uh, reminds me of some of the beast's lower legs. Um, yeah, I would say with uh, very similar to the quake beast and lava beast. Um, yeah, the torso looks pretty interesting. It looks like you used a uniter torso or not a uniter torso. It looks like you used a uh, Star Wars torso for that. that yeah. Looks Cool. You use the Kylo Ren one with the gear. It's the gearbox one. Um, I'll take a picture of his his cape off. Also, he looks really really weird out his cape off because that's why he usually has a keep cape on because you know he just looks. Thinks he well, looks that's interesting light design. I like it. He looks really cool. The horns I really like too. I thought it was really wise to use transparent neon ones to match his eye stock. It looks really nice. Yeah. Uh, 
Looks really cool. I'm really interested to see if he's undead, if he's like a skeleton man, or if that's just the way he is, or like where he comes from, if he's from the pit. I'm interested to see all that in the series. Yeah, he um, he's not dead. It's just the way he looks, pretty much. He just gifted yeah. with looking like a skeleton for his entire Yeah, he's just got so messed up throughout his life. He uh, kind of looks just looks like that. So, yeah. Well, yeah, looks really good. I dig it, dude. Yep. Uh, so that's pretty much it once again. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Nice mock. Nice mocks all the way around, guys. Um, all I, I really like because they all have something like interesting builds, especially the. Gamatorin that you posted, and it's pretty cool. It's nice to see the creative stuff like that instead of, you know, basic stuff. But let's talk about the movie now. The fourth Bionicle movie. The legend not, never born. <laughs> well, um, I'll just start off because you guys were talking about the mocks. I'll start off with my opinion on it. Um, the second favorite Bionicle movie. Uh, I've got a weird opinion on the Bionicle movies. Most people have different opinions than I do. Like, most people think Webby Shadows is the best, and then so on, but I think I think Metro Nui is the best, and I think this one's the second best, just because I thought there was a lot of really good ideas in it, and I found it a lot easier to watch than uh, Web of Shadows or the first Bionicle movie. It was a lot, yeah. it, it was flowed better, it was over faster, <laughs> felt like it was over faster, I went by fast, Renzo said he felt the same way, um, and I liked, the, I liked a lot, there was a lot of really good aspects about it, um, there's a lot of really bad ones, but I feel like the really good ones, like, what was I talking about? I think I mentioned this with either, yeah, this is basically my opinion on all the G1 movies. There's some really high points and some really low points. And same thing with this movie. There's some really good parts and really bad parts. For example, I think Machinui is a great character in this movie, and I really love his voice actor. Voice actor is spot on. He's, he's really cool. Um, he did a really great job with giving him a, I don't know, like, it was just the perfect voice. I felt like he, it fit really well. I know he was on Star Trek, and, uh. It was smart to cast him as this guy because he did a really good job. Um, and some of the other voice actors I really like, and some of them I really hate. So I really like a car's voice actor. Eric, sorry. A car, I think, has a really strong voice actor. He sounds. I really like his voice actor. He sounds rugged and, and old, and I think it's really cool. Don't like Kena's voice actor, but I mean, she's not awful. She's just the character's annoying. It's not her fault that she's annoying. Um, <laughs> It, it, the voice actor is annoying. The character is annoying. The voice actor had to say annoying lines, but that's not the voice actor's fault. Barracks, on the other hand, I don't know what was but this dude. He was he's voice acted by a great voice actor too. This dude voice acts um, a ton of characters in the Clone Wars. He voice acted. He's the voice actor for Obi Wan Kenobi in the Clone Wars. The dude's a really good voice actor. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what happened with this. Like he, I I don't think he does like a. It's not like a stale voice. It's just the voice he chose is really annoying. It's really high pitched and like a lot of the stuff he says, like he does a lot of like ooh, 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 ooh. he does a lot of that stuff, and that's really annoying in the movie. Like he's just he's just kind of gross. Like I don't like a lot of the like you know. There's weird scenes where he just kind of like like does stuff and makes weird noises, and it's like stop please like a lot of lines he could have cut off way quicker like he doesn't need to go like oh hi matanui like he could have just shut back your oh hi matanui oh hey you know oh this thing here Ooh, i'm not going to steal it i'm definitely just borrowing it he goes to like from strange like from some places to like he just goes from really high to low and he just it fluctuates too much the voice um which makes him annoying and then a lot of the weird little things that he the noises he makes are like, stop. Um, I really liked uh, the voice actor for... Terex. Yeah, Terex is the one with the gold like blades and he was fighting Bastus, right? I thought he was pretty good. I liked him. Um, I feel like his voice is very noble and I feel like it fit his design. And I think... Yeah, he was really short. He was in it for a very short time, but he was good. Tuma is like fine, but he's like... The, he's super cliche. Like, he's not bad. He's just really basic bad guy, you know? Like, it's just really, like, he sounds like a really, he sounds like a, like a side character from Transformers or something. Like a side Decepticon. It's just, there's nothing special about him. He wasn't annoying. He was short. The fight with, there's like, like, so I think this movie, the cinematography and the filmmaking, I guess, is a lot better than the old ones. There's a lot of, it, it follows the rules a lot more. It feels a lot less disjointed. Like, a lot of the old Bionicle movies feel a little disjointed and, like, weird. Um... This movie doesn't feel as disjointed. It feels it flows better, um, but it's just, it's just like a lot of mediocrity. Like it doesn't 
like there's not like really bad parts like it like nothing like the weird slow-mo scenes in the originals or anything like that great like the introductions in the originals and in in some of the voice acting and some of the like makuta not the makuta stuff but some of the 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 what is it the atmosphere of the originals it, it it's not there's not, there aren't like the weird things but there also aren't the great things it's just really basic and mediocre which makes it easier to get through but not as rewarding um and so i liked the setup for the makuta and tuma fight was good it felt like it was really hyped up like you see all the this is the what are they called the dudes the bone hunt the bone the bone hunters and the scroll you see all the bone hunters crawl on those like those pillars and they start putting their swords out and you see the circle and you see like there's a lot of very good establishing shots and it's like oh man this is going to be a great fight and then he's like a video game boss and it's like okay and then it wouldn't stop cutting to barracks and to kina and it's like stop doing that like um and a lot of there was some good dialogue with Mata Nui in there. Like he says, like, um, like he says something about like, like you know, you don't be like too, like you know, don't be like. What does he say? He says something about being like an overconfident giant, and he's like, you know, like giants, like confident giants fall easily. And he's like, trust me, I know because he was once a giant robot. He was really confident, and so I like that. That was pretty cool. But then the fight itself was like, like really just basic and really like. I mean, it wasn't really like that entertaining or gripping. Yeah. Yeah, some fight scenes were okay and such. It was just generic fight scenes. Like the, the it was it was better than the originals. The original fight scenes are pretty lame or there aren't fight scenes. Um so there's a lot more so if you're a kid, you're probably like, yay. But for a very like, okay, that dude's moving super elastically and rubbery, but still there's more action, which which is good because Bionicle is a very action packed series. Um so that was good, except they were kinda like they were really weird and elastic, but at least there was action. Holy match that was bad that was, and then it wasn't as bad as the fight with makuta and bakama that was oy vey. um but uh, i i did there's a lot less awkward things in the movie like there's like like tuma is not great but he's not as like 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 i don't know like it never hits the highs the original never hits the lows it's just really fine and just okay mediocre there's some bad stuff but it's just really like basic and like nothing special this weight setup is simple i like the it's a, got a very clean three act structure um it starts off with the beginning and then you know and then the ending there's a very finite there's a the ending at the end is actually a giant battle um which is cool because most of the originals didn't have those and that was satisfying in terms of a story to have that um i don't know i feel like there was a better movie in here somewhere but i feel like a lot of I feel like the animation company and a lot and some of the voice actors, like, you know, just the budget wasn't big enough and it's like it had a good script, but I just don't think it came through that well. I mean it was fine. It was like I said, super mediocre. Um yeah, just fine. It's i I think um it just I think the way you think about the comic movies just depends on how much some things annoy you and how much some things don't annoy you. So like if you really don't like like if you're like me, you really don't like any Makuta scenes in the original, you really don't like a lot of the awkward things then you're probably just going to be more akin to okay i'd rather just not have those there um but if you're more into you know a lot of the real if you're if you're fine with that you're willing to sit through that and just enjoy the better parts then you probably will like those more um so yeah i feel like if it just it's a fine movie it's okay i feel like it's not harmful it's just fine it's whatever like you probably don't need you don't really need to watch it it's just there's better things you can do with your time <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if you see, like, it would be really exciting to see back in, like, oh, yeah, I got seen this back then, you know, 2009, but now it's, yeah. Yeah. Um, you guys want to talk about it more in depth, then I kind of shared my opinion. Uh, I, I honestly don't have much to say, but, you know, it, it's an okay movie, not one of my favorites, but, you know, 2009, to me, it's, uh, it's a nostalgic year to me, so it's one of my favorite years. Kind of, uh, but the movie. Well, I remember seeing the camera. I was like, "Oh my god!" And then I didn't realize the story. I didn't really know the story back then. You know, I was like, "Oh, that's cool. It's cool." But yeah, I will say, I want to quickly. I forgot to say this, but I was thinking about it. I like the way he treats the Bionicle lore in it. It feels very in line with it. Like the other movies, when you're reading the books, they don't give you the same feeling as when you're watching the movies. They feel like they're almost in different universes. There's a lot more lore. There's a, like they talk about the great beings, and it feels more in line with that but that's not be it's good that's because there's no style 
so it's so gosh darn basic that it fits. And I'm I'm just happy that they at least address some of the lore. That's nice to see, like the great beings mentioned. I don't know if they were ever mentioned in the original trilogy. Um, and seeing like the like Chris was talking about, he liked the scene with the green walls, and that was cool with the the max. But it in like in a trilogy, like it was planned out. But it, it right now, it's just kind of like there. Anyway, sorry I cut you off. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, I mean, overall, it's an okay movie, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, I mean, I actually don't have much to say about it. But, I mean, the whole flow of the movie was alright. It's, yeah, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what else to say. Yeah, pretty much, there's not much to say. That's, what, that's how this movie is. Yeah. There's not much to say. I was just going to say, with the whole flow, imagine you, it's a different focus. I like, because, you know, it's a whole new world, so it's a whole different focusing, you know, than just, it's, it's less confusing. Yeah, agree. It is definitely. Anyway, sorry, sorry, Craig, sorry. So I don't love Bionic of the Legend Reborn, but I don't really hate it either. It's really just a meh movie for me. First, let's talk about the things I didn't like. The voices for some of the characters, such as Beric, Kina, and Metis, didn't feel right to me. The music in this movie was also not as great as in the previous films because there was a new composer. None of the musical themes really resonated emotionally with me this time. Beric as a character was really annoying, especially because of the voice he had in the movie. At least the set version of him is a really cool set. I felt that the fight scenes were odd because of the camera angles used, and the fight between Tuma and Matanui was way too short. And it was really annoying when Kina and Beric were trying to explain everything that was happening in that scene. Now let's talk about the things I did like about the movie. The animation in this movie is incredible. The characters on Bear Magna are rusty, have paint missing, and just look like they've been there a long time. The spinning pins were also an interesting touch. The only thing I can think of that bothers me about the animation is how when characters or vehicles move through the sand, you can't see their tracks or their footprints. Matanui's voice in this film was amazing. Michael Dorn did a great job delivering his lines. Akar's voice was perfect in my opinion. He just sounded like an older, weathered Victorian fighter, and it just worked. Gresh sounded alright, as did Kina. It was really great to see much more hand-to-hand -hand combat in this movie, which was one of the things lacking in the older films. The opening scene and the canyon battle are really great scenes, and the final battle in the end was satisfying with the many characters fighting and the overall action. The world building in this movie is pretty good, and you get to see quite a few various locations on Vera Magna. I felt that the character development for Matanui, Akar, and Kina was fantastic. I thought that Kina was cute, and I liked her spunky personality and her interactions with other characters, particularly Gresh. Yeah. Mm. Agreed. Um, I think, um, like, like it does, like, like I said, it doesn't hit the highs of the original, doesn't hit the lows, so it doesn't have the fantastic soundtrack that the original has, right? So that kind of sucks. Um, it's got a really basic soundtrack. It doesn't have. It, it's just like, you know, the animation's really good. I like it's it's definitely great, and they carried it over into the the Hero Factory series up until Vision from Below, which is probably one of the worst animated things I've ever seen. But um, but I think I, I really like their style. I really like the way they like the grime. Like you said, that was fantastic. That they had all the the cuts and everything. And then I love that Matanui doesn't have any of that because he's brand new. So it, it's really cool to like see all that work out. It's it, that's really nice, and it was. At no point did it feel like low res textures because I know with some grime when they had cuts, if you get too close up, it can feel really like low res. That never happened. Um, there is a, the animation is really good, but there is a general annoying over animation. It's very overly animated, so a character will like it's very like people characters feel very elastic and bouncy. So like a character move their hand and it'll be like way overly expressive. Same thing with the fight scenes; they're like really just overly like mo like there's too much motion in them, and that gets annoying because it's just it's it gets annoying to just look at that. Um, yeah, there's too much bouncing in stuff, so the fight scenes just slow down. They're, they lose their pace because a car will swing his sword w way too far back and then bounce back and swing it way and it's it's like it's just it's it, it takes too long and it loses the visceral thing that a fight scene needs um but yeah i think kids would like this one the most probably like little kids because there's a lot of action in it, whether it's good or not kids don't care it's there's a lot of action it's a lot like it's a lot easier to watch. It doesn't get as boring. Sometimes the original Bionic movies can get really boring. Yeah, I think the animation kind of intrigued 
the uh, viewer. But I think like the most annoying thing about this movie was like the moving pins on the characters. Like you see, like they're spinning around. That was really annoying. That was really stupid. Yeah. Yeah. Overall, just kind of, it's there. You know what I mean? It, I can't. It's like, like I may say, oh, it's my second favorite Bionicle movie, but I feel like I get less out of it than the Bionicle movies. Like I said, there's some, gr like as much as I crap on the first Bionicle movie, the opening scene of that movie is fantastic. It's so well done. The rest of it, there's, um, it, like I said, has ups and downs. And the music, like I, I feel like I get more out of that. There's, and it adds more to the, the culture, I guess, of the fan base. And this movie isn't as bad, but it, it, it doesn't have those good things about it. So it's just kind of like. You don't get as much out of it, I feel like. It's very, like, forgettable, and it doesn't have those fantastic things that become iconic to Bionicle, you know? Um, for me, let's see, I gotta remember how I rated the other ones. I can't remember how I rated the first movie. I think I gave it, like, a three or something. Um, the second one I gave, like, a 7.5 or something like that. And the third one I gave, like, a 6. So I think I would give this one a 6.5. Just to have it fit with my previous scores. Yeah, I think I'd give it like a 6.5 or 7 out of 10. Yeah, I think a 6.5 works. It's a pretty mediocre sounding score, so I think it'd fit the movie. But yeah, like I said, it's technically, it's a better, I think it's a better movie than a lot of the older ones. Not all of them. I think, I still think Machinery is the best Bionicle movie. But technically, it's better than, you know, Web of Shadows. And for me, at least, in my opinion, I think, tech, like, objectively, technically, it is. But I, like I said, I feel like I get less out of it. I feel like the experience of watching it is a lot less than the originals, because the originals, there are those great moments. Um, and so, I feel like I would wreck, this is weird, because I, I like the, like, I think they're worse, I think the, like, Web of Shadows and Mass of Light are worse movies, but I would recommend watching them more, because I think you'd get more out of it, which is a weird scenario, but, yeah, because, like I said, the originals have higher highs and lower lows, um, and, yeah, but, like I said, you should watch them on Krex's channel, because he's got those fantastic 60 frames per second remasters, yeah, those remasters are great, um, and they're really nice because we don't need to watch like really crappy like small like screen in the corner of like a little box in the corner of your screen high pitched thing on the internet anymore. Now we can just watch your really high quality ones. So that's nice. But yeah, I think that rounds out the discussion of this movie and all the Bionicle movies. Next will be um, the what is it? I think tomorrow we're probably we should, probably should maybe maybe not. I don't know. Maybe we should take a break. But we're going to talk about. Um, during a one, which is going to be hard for me to talk about because I've got so many conflicting opinions on it, and it's I'm just uh, it's going to be. I got, big, I got a big bark on that one. Ooh. This show is like there's so much that I have to say about it. It's one of the it's going to be one of the hardest things ever. It's giving me anxiety just thinking about it because because <laughs> like I want to defend stuff about it and I really want to trash on stuff about it, and it's like I don't know how to feel about during a one still. Um. All right, so now let's talk about last discussion, general discussion. Since there isn't much going on, we don't have any stories because um, we're boring. No, I'm kidding. Um, we're going to talk about the Star Wars Episode Eight behind-the-scenes video. Uh, yes. I think I'm going to hand it over to Krexer to start because I think he is a much more qualified Star Wars fan than me, for sure. He knows way more than I do. So you want to lead, take the lead, Krexa? Sure. So recently a... New Star Wars Episode Eight: The Last Jedi behind-the-scenes video was released, and it had a lot of really cool stuff in it. There were a lot of new uh, alien creatures and uh, characters that we see in it, which was really cool. And um, they showed various um, effect shots that were being filmed, um, and shots where uh, actors were going up against green screen and with equipment and stuff. And there are a couple new clips from the movie that were shown. And um, a lot of it uh, seems to be really original and stuff we haven't seen before. So I think that's good. I mean, with everything new in Star Wars, it might be kind of jarring at first because you're used to all the original stuff. But I'm hoping that it, the new stuff will be uh, unique and will uh, turn out well. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Um, some of the scenes and uh, locations that were kind of shown here give me some Star Wars Episode Two: Attack of the Clones and Episode Five: The Empire Strikes Back vibes. So that's kind of cool. And yeah, overall, it was just a really neat video. And 
uh, I'm excited to see what direction this new movie takes. Agreed. From episode seven, I think we definitely need a different movie after that. Whether you like the movie and you think that it ripped off the originals is a good thing or a bad thing, I think everyone can agree that in episode eight, we all want to see different stuff. Um, yeah, I think we're going to get that as far as I was predicted and seen. Um, the one thing that worries me, so I'm, I'm really, I love a lot of it, but there's, a, there's, there's some stuff that worries me about it. And that's a lot of the lines that are said. Um, I'm very conflicted on what they're saying. So there's a lot of the things that we've heard from episode eight is that it's very different. And a lot of the actors are really surprised. And a, lot, and a lot of them are like, whoa, you know, it takes a really different direction that people aren't expecting. But, you know, it's really cool and stuff. That could both work out really well as being unique and different. And it also sounds like a massive excuse for a bad movie. Um, like saying, oh, it takes a different direction could also be an excuse for it's not a very good direction. It's not very good, but it's different. Um, so I'm worried about that. I'm like, it could go either way for me. Um, but I hope it goes the right way. And I, and I think that it will go the right direction. People are going to get mad at me for saying this too. Um, uh, but I think that it's going to work out, but I'm just a little worried. Um, cause it's easy to, I'm, but I'm happy if, even if it does take a weird direction, it's not good. At least they tried something different. Um, but I'm talking way too far in the future. Movie hasn't even come out yet. But aside from that, which worried me and made me excited at the same time that those lines, um, the visuals and everything look great. Like, it's, this was the, a lot of people can agree, that, for me, that was the best part about The Force Awakens. I really liked the movie, but the best part was the visuals. They were great. They looked fantastic. They looked like Star Wars. They were, they were awesome. I love the visuals of Force Awakens. And in this, the visuals look incredible. The creature design looks yeah. weird but awesome which is exactly what star wars is none of the creatures feel out of place or like they don't belong in star wars they all look great they're all practical i love that weird llama rabbit thing that's like in the in the in the, the stall or whatever that it's in that looks really cool it it visually looks great i love the the new island that they have with um with the the, the sand that when it's are you trying to say something tokoto no no i'm not saying anything. okay um, with the, the sand that turns red, looks really interesting. Um, little worried though, because they're going on this planet that's got a bunch of particle stuff on it and they're fighting walkers and I'm like, okay, we get it. You know, episode, episode, f episode five. Okay. But you don't need to, I hope that's not a big part of the movie. I hope that's like the start of the movie or something. So it's not like too big of a, I don't know. I don't want it to rip anything off. Um, but there's some cool stuff, gems that I'm sure people smarter than me will find, but overall visually looks great. There's a scene with uh, Daisy Ridley. She's got a lightsaber, and then like seven people come at her with like like seven other. Yeah, what? frick. The Knights of Ren, huh? Those are different than the Knights of Ren, but I'm a little concerned because first off, like one of the my favorite parts, another one of the things, one thing, not okay, because yeah, there's a pun of different. The Force Awakens is a complicated movie, but one thing that I liked about it was that how special lightsabers felt. They felt very powerful and special, right? Um, and I love that. Like when when uh, when Finn first turns on the lightsaber, it's like powerful. It gives you. It's like wow, that's a that's a very strong weapon, and I love it. Like that's a Jedi's weapon. It's very strong. And that's something I didn't like about the prequels was that there were so many lightsabers. I want to. I'm not saying I don't like the prequels. I don't want to annoy anybody. But one thing I didn't like about them was that there were a ton of lightsabers, and lightsabers didn't feel special. They felt like sticks. They didn't feel unique. I like uh, it. Too battle genosis. Um. Force Awakens, the lightsaber felt very valuable. I'm worried, though, seeing Daisy Ridley block, like, seven dudes with, like, seven lightsabers, because that's out the window then. Like, if you've got seven lightsabers, like, going out, like, that, okay, lightsabers aren't special anymore, you know, there's a million of them. I hope they're not. I don't think, Ray, I don't think Ray's being attacked by lightsabers. There's probably guys, like, not sure, and probably will maybe, maybe not have lightsabers, but I think there's probably, like, seven soldiers coming at her. And she's using her lightsabers and defend so on. So, but so. they've got like sticks. If the sticks are like stabs or like, like you know, Grievous's guards have got those. If they're like that, that's fine. But I'm just worried there are going to be like seven red lightsabers in the movie. Like that worries me. Yeah, I mean I don't know. But we don't know yet. Again, that's hard to tell. It could be that, or it's probably just sticks. Um, I really liked. They show a hint of a new stormtrooper, and they got those weird staff things. That looked cool. Yeah, I was like, whoa. Um, again, but my favorite part was the aliens. It was cool. I, I love uh, Luke's got this funny looking like man person. That's pretty funny. <laughs> I love that. Um, overall, it was really, it was a really great watch. I really enjoyed it. Um, 
I'm really excited. I, 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 it got me excited pretty much, and I think it was a really well done video and everything. I, I, I prefer that over another trailer. I feel like a trailer is going to spoil. Yeah, I think that video was needed. Um, but yeah, overall, I think it was a great, fun video to watch. I think it was better than the Force Awakens one. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, it looks pretty cool. I'm really pumped. Um, I, uh, I'm excited. At least, if anything, it's going visually. I think it's going to be great, and I also think that hopefully the different take will be good, and I think that hopefully it'll have a great story and characters, and I, I'm excited to see where it goes. Because I'm, if anything, it's definitely intriguing. I think everybody's intrigued because they're saying, "Oh, it takes such a weird direction." Everyone's intrigued what they're talking about. Um, so that's going to be really cool. Um, and Disney shows that they they know how to make a movie set in the Star Wars universe. It, it all feels a part of Star Wars, which is great. It's always, it doesn't feel weird and like separate. Even uh, Rogue One felt like it took place in the Star Wars universe. It didn't feel like, you know, because it would have been easy for them to not pay attention to that and just make like a movie like a Star Trek or something where it didn't feel like it took place in Star Wars. Um, anyway, I've been talking about that way too long. Even you know, I'm somebody who doesn't even know that much about Star Wars. All right, so uh, yeah, I think that brings us to the end of the podcast, right, guys? Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, yeah, thank you for watching, everybody. Thank you guys for being on. Thank you, Craigster, for recording and editing this. It means a lot, dude. Um, thanks for watching. Yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Yeah, thanks for watching. Um, we'll see you guys in the next episode. Goodbye. Bye. See ya. I want my mac and cheese.